Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 19th. First up, this is from Softpedia.com. AVG proudly announces it will sell your browsing history to online advertisers. AVG, the Czech antivirus company, has announced a new privacy policy in which it boldly and openly admits it will collect user details and sell them to online advertisers for the purpose of continuing to fund its freemium-based products. This is something that people tend to react to and get really upset over, but if you want free software or heavily discounted software, almost free, you're going to have to put up with stuff like this. I just assume that a lot of the software I get that is free somewhere in the user agreement is going to tell me that they aggregate data to sell to advertisers and researchers and stuff like that. So if you want to continue to get it for free, now AVG is not a antivirus that I use much anymore. I used to use it quite a few years ago, but I think it really is not quite as good anymore as some other free choices. I use Avast, but also Avira is a very good one, and I think AVG comes in maybe third or maybe a little bit lower down. Now, if you're using it, it's it's still a decent antivirus, and if you're using it, you like it, it uh, for you and your type of browsing and uh, using of the computer if it works for you. I'm not telling people to, to get rid of it or anything like that. Um, but that's just my choices. I use Avast and Avira, and I do not have a reason to really get concerned over places that aggregate your data. It's always possible, yeah, people will say, well, if they aggregate my data and then uh, somehow something goes wrong, they could expose some of my private data. Yeah, it is possible, but remember, I mean, people that Christmas shopped last year at Target got their personal data and their credit card numbers even exposed, too, so... If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's just part of living in the modern computer era and the modern technology age that there's always the chance that some of your personal data could get leaked out. But I don't think AVG is any more of a concern than any other place. And uh, I don't think there's any intents for, uh, they have no intention of exposing your personal private data out in the web so hackers can get a hold of it. And next up, this is from Bloomberg.com. It looks like Volkswagen is in trouble in the U.S., especially with their diesel cars. VW clean diesel scheme exposed as criminal charges weighed. Volkswagen AG's admission that it cheated to make nearly half a million diesel cars appear cleaner burning than they were leaves the automaker facing billions in fines. Its executives risking criminal charges and its U.S. expansion plans in peril. I guess they could face up to $18 billion in fines over this. What they did was kind of, I don't know, I don't know if you'd call it clever or stupid, but they did the hack on the software and they purposely did it too. They, this is a purposeful made design so that if anything plugged in to monitor what was happening with the uh, um, output of the tailpipe of the car, it would actually detect that it was being monitored and it would bring in some heavy duty anti pollution devices on the vehicle that would later on, when the thing was, when the detector was unplugged, it would go back into regular mode. So instead of having to engineer extra performance into the car to make up for the uh, pollution control like most automakers do, they decided to cheat and just have the car uh, drop in performance because it's only during the testing period anyway and then put it back into other modes so that people driving around could still keep the same performance. So they were kind of cheating compared to other automakers that had to put all the engineering and all the extra work into making the cars uh, pollution less pollution and still be able to perform up to uh, people's standards. Yeah, you can always cheat and just uh, knock the performance way down in a vehicle, but then people wouldn't want to drive it. So VW tried to cheat a little bit there, and uh, who knows what's going to happen. There might be some people even going to jail for it, and I guess this, uh, as far as diesel vehicles uh, being sold in the future in uh, the U.S., that's going to really be up for grabs now. And I'm just going to limit it to three subjects this week because I want to really talk about this. This is from timeanddate.com. I use this website quite a bit for other things, but it's really good for uh, looking up uh, astronomical events. And around September 27th through 28th, and we're going to have a lunar eclipse, and we're going to have one that's going to be really fantastic because, for one thing, you don't need any kind of... Uh, telescope or even binoculars, although binoculars would be kind of cool if you have them, use them, obviously, but this thing is going to be uh, in the evening time happening at normal hours, not 1, 2, 3 in the morning. This lunar eclipse is going to start happening um, at least in the Midwest around 7 o'clock, 
and lasts for a little bit over five hours so you're going to get a really good view of it and because it lasts so long like that you don't need to really just sit out there and watch it unless you really want to you can you know go out and check on it about every half hour or so starting at about a um, little bit after seven o'clock now this thing is going to be visible in its entire entirety in uh, all of south america uh, in the United States, in the uh, North America, east of the Mississippi, and the regions of Canada that are east, it's going to be in West Africa and western parts of Europe. They're going to be able to see the entire thing from beginning to end. But pretty much all of North America, all of Africa, all of Europe is going to be able to see the majority of it, or at least half of it. So that's going to work out pretty good. The only unfortunate people are those people in the Asian regions and the people in Australia. It's going to be. Uh, not within their view because of the way well just because of the way physics works but if you get a chance I would say get out there and uh, take a look at it uh, the other thing about it too is it's going to be during a period called a super moon now this just means that in the moon's elliptical orbit it's going to be in its closest approach so it'll be about 14 percent larger not that most people probably unless you're really um, really got good eyes or you just really have looked at the moon a lot you're gonna be able to tell that it's 14 percent larger but it's actually going to be at its closest to the earth in its normal orbit and the eclipse is going to be happening at the same time so if you get a chance get outside what i'm going to probably do myself starting maybe at about a quarter after seven is i'll probably just go out every 15 every 20 minutes and take a look and sometimes it is really fantastic because first you're going to see the penumbra which is the partial shadow then you're going to see the umbra which is the full shadow and the colors of the moon just get really interesting they can go from orange to bronze to sometimes to me it looks like a a copper moon it almost looks like a copper penny in the sky um, just depending on what the atmosphere is like at the time and the lighting and everything like that but it can be really a, an interesting phenomenon and I, I would encourage everybody and when this is going to take place is exactly a week from today I could have done it in the next TDD report but that would have given you hours notice and I know a lot of people watch my report maybe a couple days later after I post it and then it would be too late so I wanted to get everybody a jump on it so not this Sunday but next Sunday at about seven o'clock in the evening start looking at this and uh, looking for this and you will see it and it would be uh, really fantastic and if anybody does uh, have a chance to get any pictures of it or anything like that send in some pictures if you're into a if you do want to set up a telescope and bother with all that kind of stuff like that I'd, I'd kind of like to see some pictures and I'll post them if anybody sends them for the TDD report so anyway that's about it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week <laughs>